Uh, okay, uh, we have Chris Parker, one of our co-hosts here. And Chris, quickly tell us, uh, Brandon and uh, Park here, they're fighting in Macau, as you know. Um, take us through that fight. What, what are your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, so Pacquiao and Brandon, it's, a, it's, it's an exciting fight. Yeah. We have two different styles. Brandon likes to fight on the inside, um, throw combinations on the inside, and Pacquiao likes to co go in and out. Um, so one of the uh, key aspects um, of the fight is going to be the ring size. So I'm not sure what the size of the ring is going to be, but Pacquiao because he likes to move in and out, he wants the ring to be as big as possible. And I'm pretty sure that Pacquiao has that to his advantage because um, he's for sure the money maker. Oh, okay. so, so he will probably be the one who dictates, um, you know, to be done. yeah, what, 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 everything that he wants done is probably going to be on Pacquiao's, Pacquiao's side. So, um, yeah, Brandon, Brandon likes to fight on the inside. He's not a fighter like Marquez who waits for the counter. Uh, he, he more so likes to stay on the inside and just bang, right? But there's still some technical aspect to his game. To his game? Yeah, because he's trained by a uh, former champion, former world champion, Robert Garcia, um, and Robert Garcia's father. So, and Robert Garcia's father was the former trainer of, um, what was his name? Uh, I don't recall his name. We'll go back to him. We'll go yeah, back but uh, Fernando Vargas. Uh, Fernando oh, Vargas. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Fernando Vargas. So, okay, we got some um, so okay. I mean, basically, Brandon Rios has two trainers in his corner, two world class trainers in his corner, and Robert Garcia is on a street. Uh, is on a roll right now. Um, with Nonino Donaire and Mikey Garcia, who's fight, who's actually fighting tonight, and we're gonna be doing the commentary for you guys. So both guys, Nonito and Garcia, are fighting. Tonight. Yeah, they're both fighting tonight. Yeah. So um, it's it's a big night for uh, Robert, Robert Garcia. So they can check the commentary today. You know, the fan, your fans and all the fans, they can. Yeah, yeah. So tune in. Um, we're gonna be doing a commentary, okay. play by play, uh, live commentary for for both of those fights okay so go, going back to uh, to uh, to Pacquiao wh what does Pacquiao need to do and what does Brandon need to do no. so uh, Pacquiao basically what he needs to do I think um, if he doesn't put his back to the ropes like he did against Cotto like he did against uh, Margarito in some in some of the rounds um, Pacquiao is he's gonna have He's gonna have a good night if he moves, uses his footwork. Brandon's feet cannot keep up with Pacquiao's uh, foot speed, so Pacquiao needs to be in and out as fast as he can, um, and Brandon will be looking for him all night. So if Brandon wants to take take uh, Brandon wants to take the victory. Brandon's gonna have to uh, basically do what Marquez has been doing. And we saw with the with the Triple G fight when okay. he fought Stevenson, uh, we saw that when every time Triple G finished his combination, uh, Stevenson would would um, would basically throw a punch, throw a punch to counter. So Brandon's gonna have to wait Pacquiao to come in after he finishes his combination, or while he's throwing uh, throwing punches. That's when he should. Un uh, unleash his uh, okay. his combinations, yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, you know probability and the odds, what what what's uh, what's the likelihood out of hundred percent? What's the likelihood that Pacquiao is gonna win, and what's the likelihood that uh, Brandon is gonna win? Out of okay, 100%. so so the odds odds makers um, have Pacquiao. Your odds, I need your odds. Maker. My odds. My, yeah. uh, let me tell you what what uh, the odds makers uh, have it for right now. Mm. So it's four to one. Four to one, but I, I think um, I think that's kind of accurate. I would put it more towards, uh, yeah. I think four to one is good. I think Brandon still has a good shot at winning. I think he has a good shot at knocking knocking out Pacquiao. Okay. Uh, uh, I want you to put in layman terms and percentages for the average people that don't know what for what one. Out of okay. hundred percent, who is like 50, 40, 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30? Okay. What do you think? So Pacquiao and, and Rios. 
so Pacquiao and Rios, I would say uh, 75 25. And who is 75? Who's 25? Pacquiao is 75. Okay. Um, because if, if it goes the distance, it's all 12 rounds, um, Pacquiao's just going to, he's going to win on points. Um, and Brandon, Brandon has never been knocked down before okay. in his career. So um, it's going to be tough to, to knock out uh, Brandon Rios. I mean, he is coming up in weight, but they're about the same size. Okay. So um, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be very interesting. So uh, GMV Sports and Show fans, we are we are holding him to his word. He says seventy five percent Pacquiao is gonna win. Yeah. Twenty five percent Rios is gonna win. He's coming back after the fight. We might be together here for the fight. So let's hold him to it. Uh, so uh, lastly, uh, talking about Pacquiao and uh, and and Brandon. This fight is taking place in Macau. You know, we talked before about Macau being a, a hub for uh, gambling. Yes. How is uh, because Pacquiao is, is is a well-known brand, but that's in, in his home is in, in in his home region in Asia. How is the fans, the support that is in Asia, going to affect the fight? Do you think it's going to have like a very big impact him fighting in Asia? Um. No. No. Not really. I, I mean, w once you get in the ring, I mean the. You know, you don't see anything around you. Okay. So all you all you see is what you have to do, uh, what the work is, um, work is at hand, and that's that's basically what you, what basically what uh, you're gonna be focusing on. Um, leading up to the fight is a different story. So um, leading up to the fight, it's it's um, there are many untold uh, events, untold stories. Um, that lead up to the fight as well, which can also play a key factor um, as far as injuries. Um, as 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 you know and I know, um, I well, I know for sure that I've never been into I've never gone into a fight a hundred percent because there's always something that that is bothering you. Um, so um, if uh, if there are injuries, um, if there's um, something going on um, in their in their personal lives, um, some some type of mental um, mental distraction. I mean, all of these things play a role on on the highest level. Um, so um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to watch. Um, but if everything everything is uh, Everything plays out the way that it should. I have, uh, yeah, Pacquiao should should have an easy night, easy victory. Um, okay, yeah. Th that's good. So uh, let's quickly go to uh, to let's go quickly review the uh, Golovkin fight versus uh, Stevens. Uh, you did watch the fight, uh, yep. Golovkin and uh, and uh, and Stevens. You know, uh, did the fight uh, um, turn out to be what you expected? And what did you see in the fight that uh, you can tell the fans? Uh, you know, in terms of uh, Stevens and Golovkin. All right, well, Triple G. Triple G. I mean, this guy is a terror. <laughs> this guy is uh, is from uh, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, I think of Russian descent, but he is he is a monster. I mean, this guy. Nobody near his weight class possesses the power, the knockout power that he possesses, um, and he has an extensive am amateur background. Um, I believe he has about 375 fights in the amateurs and a total of over 400 fights. I mean, I, I don't know. I've never heard of a boxer who's, have, has, who's had over 400 fights. Willie Pep. <laughs> All right, Willie Pep, your favorite fighter. Willie Pep. Yeah, your favorite fighter. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, a lot of Muay Thai fighters have they do that. Yeah, like uh, 400, over 400, 500 fights. Um, Bakao is one of my favorite. Um, so, yeah, man. Like, and he's never been knocked down. And, and he has no scare. He has no scar in his face. His no. face is like a baby. He's, he's never a, been, he's never been never knocked touched. down. Yeah. He's never been really hurt. Yeah. And I mean, all boxers, all boxers get hurt yeah. at some point in time. Everybody, yeah. Even when you, when we've seen with Floyd Mayweather, he got hurt against. By Mosley. Yeah, Shane Mosley. So. Um, he's never been hurt. I mean, this guy, this guy's a terror. He's he's, he's gonna be he's gonna be. Um, 
So take, take, take us through the fight. What did you see? What did you like? What did you not like in both sides? Okay, so what did I, what did I like? I mean, I like Stevenson's style. Um, he, he, did, he did do things right, um, except he was, he was trying to avoid his power, obviously. Um, his power was, was bothering Stevenson, and Stevenson wasn't able to get off. He wasn't able to attack. He wasn't able to really be on the offensive. He was more so waiting to counter. Which did play uh, to his benefit because when he did counter, that that was when Golovkin was the most vulnerable. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter how fast, how big, or uh, how strong you are. Whenever you throw a punch, you leave in the opening for a counter. So every time Golovkin threw a power shot, he was open for the counter because he stayed in the pocket. Most fighters, most quick fighters, most slick fighters like Floyd Mayweather, every time they throw a shot, they leave from the point that that they threw the shot at. So they're not they're not uh, in the line of fire. So every time Floyd Mayweather throws a shot, he you, moves. He moves down. his head. Yeah, he ducks. He moves his head. Um, he's somewhere else. Not at the same place. Yeah. So, um, with Golovkin, he would he he would stay in the pocket. He wouldn't really move his head much. Yeah. He wouldn't really move his yeah, body I much. Saw that, I saw that. So he he basically was just uh, just uh, he was like a tank. He was just yeah, uh, yeah. running through everything. So um, do you think do you think if he fi if he meets a technical fighter, that person might uh, take advantage of that? If he fights a technical. Yeah, who fighter. can who can counter? And yeah, then, but uh, the big problem is the, the power. Yeah, yeah. Th that power, that type of power. When you when you know that any one shot could be it. I mean, uh, s s your technique could go out the window mm. at some point in time. Um, so and within his weight class, I mean, I, I'm hearing stories that heavyweights can't even hang with him in sparring. So. Um, Golovkin, man, th this guy, he's, he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be one of the biggest uh, stars pretty soon. Yeah, but bef before we, we we wrap the show, uh, uh, probably we talk a little bit about the upcoming fight that we're gonna do. A comment: What 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 do you think? Are the, how, how do you think the fight between Golovkin and uh, Martinez will go if Martinez is fit? I think Golovkin um, would get the knockout. I would disagree with but, you that, you but. Know. Um, there is a chance that Sergio can be, if it goes the distance, um, Sergio can win on the scorecard because he's fast. Yeah, I think he's so. faster. Um, he's he likes to move, but we've seen Martinez knocked down many times. So um, Golovkin, Golovkin's power is if it if it um, hits the target. I mean, Sergio is going to go down. But I like that fight. Yeah, I, I yeah, like that's the gonna fight be an exciting yeah. fight if it ever happens. But what what I would think is uh, if if Martinez is fit, uh, I think the fight will likely go the the way uh, uh, the, the the last fight we 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 just uh, witnessed. So the guy from Argentina who fought. Uh, uh, What's his name? Lucas uh, Matisse. Matisse. Yeah. Who, who did he fought? He fought uh, uh, Danny, Peterson. He fought Danny Garcia. He okay, Danny Peterson. Garcia. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the fight might go that way uh, because uh, I, I, Golo Golovkin is very good. You know, you know, I, I followed him, but I just feel that uh, he, 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 the easiest way to beat him is to beat him mentally. Okay. I, I think if he gets a fighter that can go in his head, yeah, which Martinez will be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. And Martinez is gonna hit him one, two, take him and hold him, and and and, and I think Martinez is going to frustrate him mentally yeah. and, and and keep on moving. Yeah. That's where see, I think Golovkin. See, also there's a chance he with, can lose. Yeah, with a fighter like Martinez, you you can't get another sparring partner to emulate his style. No, that's the problem. That, that's the, the way that's he fights, the big he ends down. Yeah. yeah. So you. So. It, it's really hard to prepare for a guy like Martinez. What you have to rely on is um, you have to stay away from Martinez's strengths mm -hmm. and you have to uh, impose your will against his weaknesses exactly. and use your strengths against um, against him because that's ultimately what's what you're gonna uh, what's what's gonna win the fight. Um, you, you, you cannot prepare for a guy like Martinez um, 
he's not a textbook guy where um, you can bring in you know technical guys to spar with. You know, okay. it, there's there's no such such a thing. So um, th that's that's the beauty of the sport, right? Because um, everybody has their own style. Some choose to be uh, fully technical. I mean, there's not a lot of guys out there that are still um, fully technical because I mean, boxing is kind of on the decline as far as technique goes. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's a chance, but it's not certain that you'll beat Golovkin. But I, I think he 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 has a chance to beat him. Yeah, to, to outbox him. I think also what would make a great fight with Golovkin is Andre Ward. Yeah. Andre Ward is a is an exceptional fighter. So Andre Ward, um, I, I think he has a chance that to beat be Golovkin. That would be a tough fight for Golovkin. That yeah, be because a very tough because Andre Golovkin. Ward likes to move the a lot. The styles are too different. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see it working very well for Golovkin. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, so what what are, what are your last thoughts on that? Um, I mean, you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to watch out for Golovkin. Actually, just today, Golovkin. Um, signed to fight Martin Murray, who I, I believe uh, Sergio Martinez beat. So um, I don't think that's going to be an exciting fight. But um, yeah, Golovkin is just, he's just going to stream roll through um, all the competition until he meets someone like Andre Ward or uh, Martinez or Floyd Mayweather. But I don't think Floyd wants wants to deal with uh, yeah, Golovkin's power, no. Yeah, uh, well, l lastly, what do you think Golovkin and uh, and um, the kid you just fought, uh, Floyd? He can go up, uh, you know, Alvarez. Canelo? Yeah. Uh, actually, they're good friends. They're sparring partners. Yeah, yeah, I saw so, this before, so, um, Unlikely. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to fight. Yeah, and it, fight. it's not going to do any do them any good for their careers. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. one guy is going to have to lose, and it's, it's not... It's not a good look for their career. So. Yeah, and I think uh, he's too young to, to really go into the, those kind of deep waters. Uh, Alvarez, he, yeah. he needs to, after the Floyd fight, he needs to restart and, and really re regroup again. And yeah, but it's going to be hard because um, once you reach the top, the only way to go is it's down. Yeah. It's down. That's why I prefer It's going to be hard to bring it back up because, um, yeah, th it, it's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough game, you know, yeah. and... Um, yeah, that, that actually that fight didn't go the way that I thought it would. Mm. Um, Canelo actually uh, continued to throw. Uh, he he didn't adapt because he continued to throw power shots, yeah. but he wasn't catching Floyd with his power shots. So if you throw if you continually throw power shots and you're not catching a guy, you have to use speed. You have to ease up on some of the power and use speed. Use feints. Uh, use footwork. So um, Canelo, he, he didn't really adapt his, uh, through the later rounds, which um, kind of hurt him. So, um, but Floyd fought a beautiful fight. I mean, that, that was a tremendous, tremendous performance. Okay. So uh, just quickly wrap up, you know, for, before we go to the commentary, uh, you know, your last words to the, to the fans. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I wish uh, I could tell you guys the next time I'm fighting, but um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm caught up caught up with school right now, so um, I haven't had that much time to train. But um, I should be having a fight sometime soon, so um, be on the lookout. Who uh, I I compete um, simultaneously in boxing and Muay Thai, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I have, when I have my next fight. But so, um, good thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure for me to uh, be here and talk to you guys. Okay, so good luck with the next fight, man. Yeah, okay. yeah, CP for sure, man. Thank okay. you. Take care.